conversation with uh, Mr. Raj Sai. I should introduce you first as a, as a very uh, dear friend, as a great supporter of the classical arts and um, a great patron of classical music. Himself trained in classical music, so he's a believer, but from the corporate world. Executive Vice Chairman for Ashok Leyland and uh, I'm just going to be in a conversation with him. When listening to a variety of musicians uh, do many things, suddenly discover a spot of beauty which comes to you uh, as a complete revelation. And then there is a, there is a thrill associated with that. I mean, if, if I hear the, uh, a unique phrase from Vasudha Kumari on uh, Atabhairavi, I say, ah, I, I never thought that this is possible. I mean, so, uh, these are revelations of great beauty suddenly opening up. Uh, and then this is like going and uh, standing in front of uh, uh, Michelangelo and then looking and saying, ah, this is something which I never thought was possible. And look at this very, uh, you know, fine uh, uh, element of aesthetics in this. I think it is that discovery of beauty. It's like going into a holiday and then you go and then say, you climb up uh, 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 a mountain in, uh, in, uh, in Brazil and then you say, ah, this is beautiful. I never thought that this could be, nature could be this revealing in its beauty. So these are moments. And if people can really find a great degree of uh, joy and beauty, when they go and visit uh, uh, a place in uh, uh, Switzerland or in uh, Brazil or somewhere, I think this music uh, gives you that uh, instantly. And I, I can give countless uh, instances of this. That is what I think is, is, is the power of what we can do. And Carnatic classical music really is something which is a bit of a riddle. It's like uh, breaking a crossword puzzle. You got the riddle, then you know, ah, I've really got it now. Uh, it's all packaged in a riddle, so it doesn't appeal to somebody who does not understand this riddle. But the moment you begin to unravel that, and then you say, uh, this is now, I've now found the way, the key to opening it, this door of uh, joy, then this is boundless. It is like even sometimes I say, when, you, when you're a good student of mathematics and then you solve a rider, you know, you, you have sudden thrill when you solve this rider. And it is like that. Classical music is that. Uh, I want you to get me wrong. When I'm saying change, we need to have contemporization, we need to make changes, we need to uh, we need to see new formats, uh, new dimensions opening up. That's not to mean that we dilute what is uh, okay. what is the core. Uh, it's not mean that at all. The core continues to be the same. I mean, just the fact that all of us here, if we take Adi Shankara, although that he was a great Advaitist, and although that you can't find anyone who understood the uh, the, the formlessness and the namelessness of uh, divinity as uh, well as he did. Yet, he composed uh, Saundari Lahiri, uh, he composed uh, music and he composed poetry on every, uh, every feature of uh, uh, the goddess. Uh, and uh, he was in poetic ecstasy. No, is there a contradiction? No. There is no contradiction. I mean, we, this is not to deny the fact that the Advaita does not have any uh, Arupam, Nirganam, Gardhanam, only the Advaita is not a negation of that. This is not a negation of that. This is the way the religion has started fit to bring people into its fold and then graduate them through this process. And that process of the graduation is what it is.